Hon. David Parker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance. Does he agree with the Infometrics estimate that the 1974 Super Fund would have savings of $278 billion if it had not been axed by the national government? And does he agree wages would be higher in New Zealand if we had those higher savings? Yeah. Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, no. But it's good to see the, minister, the member has gone from relitigating the 2005 election to now relitigating the 1975 election, <laughs> because actually it was voters that knocked that scheme on the head. Supplementary question. Order. Order. Supplementary question, Honourable David Parker. Does he accept Australia's successful universal workplace savings scheme, introduced a decade after National Act ours, is why Australia owns their banks and ours, and why Australians have higher wages? Yeah. Honourable uh, Bill English. Mr Speaker, no. But I do know that one of the, two of the effects of it in Australia are that Australians have less money invested in businesses than New Zealanders. No, it's true. And their rise in household debt directly parallels their rise in nominal household savings. But if the member believes he wants the Australian system, he should be open with the New Zealand public that he is going to strictly means test national super. There is nowhere in the world that has compulsory super and universal national superannuation. Tree. Supplementary question, Honourable David Parker. Will the Minister now admit National was wrong to vote against KiwiSaver, which they now support, and call the Cullen Fund a dog, which they now support? Uh, yes. Honourable uh, Bill English. Mr Speaker, no, but if the member is going to advocate what he calls universal but is actually compulsory super, he needs to explain what impact that will have on New Zealand super. For those who have been in this parliament for a while, I think that they will recognise we spent, what, 20 years uh, in vigorous discussion over the nature of national super. It ended up universal because that's what the public wanted. And Labor is now advocating the Australian scheme, which involves strict income testing of national super. And I invite the member to announce that at the next Grey Power meeting he goes to. A supplementary. Supplementary question, Honourable David Parker. Is the uh, Minister able to table any document from the Labour Party uh, <coughs> supporting his last lie? Well, as far as this, no, well, there's no ministerial responsibility at all for that. Uh, point, point, of order, point, of order, point of order, the Honourable David Parker. M Mr Speaker, um, the Minister was allowed to get away with misrepresenting Labour order, policy order. for which, for which he has order. no response. Order. Order. Now the member is using the point of order system to debate, to debate an answer that's been given. The member should use an appropriate supplementary question. Point of order, Grant Robertson. Mr Speaker, um, I do want to ask you, therefore, how it was possible that the Minister's answer was in order. The Minister uh, gave his answer, and as is um, allowed understanding orders, uh, Mr Parker then asked a supplementary question based on that answer. That is within standing orders if the answer was in order, which you appeared to rule that it was. So I can't see why it wouldn't be in order for Mr Parker to ask that kind of question. Order. The, the question that was asked from Mr Parker to the Minister was quite in order. It effectively was, will the Minister now admit that National was wrong? And the Minister answered it very quickly by saying, no, he won't admit that. The, minister, the member, uh, David Parker, has now asked a question whether the Minister is prepared to table some Labor Party documentation. If the member wants that question ruled in order to settle the House down, I'll allow that question to stand. But if it gets a very political answer back, don't come back to me. Well, Honourable David Parker. Supplementary. Is the Minister able to table any document that he has received which proves the assertion that he made in his last answer, which was to assert that the Labor Party is moving to means-based superannuation, when that, in fact, is not our policy. Well, it's quite a different question if to carry I on. Could, Honourable if, Bill English. If I could find a coherent, rational, sensible Labor Party document on this matter, I would table it. But I can't, so I'll table the results of the, 2000, of the 1975 in 2008 election, where these issues were litigated. 
Question number eight, Ian McKelvey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, to the Minister for Economic Development.